Thermal cameras are getting cheaper and more accessible than they have ever been. In the past, thermal images were only within the reach of the high-end industrial user in certain countries, but today you can get low-cost thermal images for your smartphone that will offer you features and capabilities that we simply have never had before. Today, we're going to take a look at one of these, and that is this, the T2S Plus from Infrared. This is a portable thermal imager designed to be used on either iOS or Android, depending on what version you get. And it allows you to have some really interesting capabilities. And they are so handy for things such as electronic repair, but general DIY or pro industrial use as well. What we're going to do today is give you an overview of some of its features and capabilities and then give you a demo of this camera in use. Just to be clear up front, Infrared did reach out to me and asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at this camera. However, I have not been paid to make this video. It's not been shared with them before it's been published. And as always, with all of my content, my thoughts are entirely my own. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what this model is all about. OK, so what I've got here is the Infrared T2S Plus. Now, they say that this is the world's first 8mm macro thermal camera for smartphones. The real interesting thing about the model I've got here is this is the iOS version. It is lightning. It is not based on USB-C. It's not for Android. It is for iOS. And that is rather unusual on the cameras that I've seen from Infrared. Most of them have always been the Android models. On the back, you can see it is the Xtherm 2 T2S Plus with iOS. And you can see that made for iPhone logo there as well. Now, when you get in the box, you've got to slide off this sort of over piece of cardboard first of all inside you will find the camera as well as the additional accessories we've got some stickers and a manual and then we've got the camera that comes in this nice little pouch which we'll look at in a second and then we've got a cleaning cloth down there as well Opening up the little case inside, we will then find the camera module itself. And there's also this little area up here for holding cables or anything else. Now, as I've said, this is the lightning version, but you can get a USB version as well if you want to. Now, the real nice thing about this model, the T2S Plus, compared to the other models like the P2 Pro that I've got here, is this one has an adjustable focus lens. So rather than have this fixed lens like I've got here with this additional macro piece. This one has a fully adjustable focus lens allowing you to use it up close or in normal use on your phone for say looking at buildings, walls, structures or any other equipment and then not have to have that fixed focus. Now spec wise for this camera, this as I said is the T2S Plus. So it has a 256 by 192 resolution, that 8mm macro capability. It's got a temperature range of plus minus 2 degrees accuracy up to 450 degrees. And as it's running on iOS, it means you can use your iPhone with any compatible iOS connection for lightning on the bottom. Now this camera is the 256 by 192 as I said with a 25 hertz refresh rate and it has that plus 450 down to minus 20 degrees C capability. Now this is a battery free unit. There's no cables, no power. It simply plugs straight into your iPhone and then you install the app and you're able to use the thermal camera. Now, just looking over the camera externally and going over those specs, it is 26 by 26 by 24.2 in size and it weighs under 18 grams. As I've said, I've gone over the main spec already, which is 256 by 192 resolution. It has a 12 micron pixel pitch and it has a field of view on that lens of 44.9 to 33.4. I've already mentioned a 25 hertz refresh rate. Now, as I've shown, this camera is designed to plug straight into the side of your smartphone. However, they do also have some additional accessories as well. They have this handle which allows you to put your smartphone in and the camera at front. And then you can use an extension cable like this to be able to use it remotely rather than directly on the side of the phone. What we'll do next is walk you through how you actually set this up and then demo it in action. So to use the camera, the first thing you're going to need to do is download the app on your smart device. The app for this camera is called Xtherm and it's available both on the Android and iOS stores. 
Okay, so once you've got the app installed, you can then plug in the thermal camera. Now it is designed to be used the other way around. So it's going to show me the image of me upside down at this point because it's designed to be pointing the other way so you can use it on other things but you can see that thermal image coming up there now the first thing we can do is play with that focus adjustment and we'll take a look in a minute at it on a proper external view you can see there i can adjust that focus you can see that image changing and then if i change it on my head you can see it's there correct. Now, there's a whole host of options and capabilities in this. We've got photo mode or video mode, so that's going to set what it does, how it records. You've then got the ability to go into your camera roll. We've then got the palette settings, which are over here, so we can go down to all of the usual options you would expect to find on a thermal camera, white hot, black hot, and then going through our usual options. If I just put that up there a bit more, if I just come over the top of the camera a little bit more there you can see me a bit better now and there you can see so again we can change them all the way through to the different palette settings depending on what we want we've then over the other side here got the options so in here we have the options with the language temperature settings temperature report temperature unit, temperature range, and then the about us. This allows us to set the temperature settings down here. So for instance, you can do corrections. You've got the humidity options, the emivicity, the reflectivity, distance from the object, and you can turn on and off the logo. If I then go back down, go back to the menu, you've then got other options like temperature report. So if you've taken measurements whilst using it, it'll show you them. We've got temperature units, so we can set that from degrees to Fahrenheit. And then our temperature range, whether we're within the normal range or we're looking at something very, very hot, you can then set it on that and then that will allow it to adjust. And then we're back to normal. We then, further down this side, have a couple of other options. So we can turn on and off our phone camera. So you can see there, I can put my hand there if we want that alongside the thermal image. We've then got the refresh or the calibration button. We've then got the ability to turn on measurement options. So I can draw a square on the screen there and you can see that. And that's now measuring the temperature of my face. You can see that showing down here. I've got the phone on the side, which makes it a little bit more difficult to see, but you can see that showing there. I'll show you that more in a minute. We can then go over to a, a spot temperature. So we can say, you know what? I want the temperature of that spot there. Or we can draw a line and draw a line across the screen and then it will measure the temperature at various points on that line as well. Now just to show you that on the overhead a little bit easier vertically, so what we can do is draw a square around my face there and you can now see that it's showing the temperatures there. But we could also say I want a spot temperature on that point there. And actually I'm going to put a line here because I'd like to understand what the temperatures are doing there and you can now see that all showing along the top of the screen, showing you the highest, the average and the lowest temperatures. So if you see my face, you can see the lowest is at 29 degrees and the highest is at 34. We've got a current temperature in the roof, but that point there at 24 degrees. And then this area over here, we're somewhere between 20 and 22. Now, just to show you what I'm looking at, we have my camera there and we've got the box on the screen showing the temperatures. And then if I move across, you can see we've got a monitor, another monitor, there's a light up there. If I just show you down to my keyboard, we've got my Steam Deck, uh, Stream Deck, I should say. Um, we've got my Roadcaster, my keyboard. And if I actually show you in the background, you can see one of my 3D printers is here. That's the Prusa. And you can see that the motor's hot. If I actually just show you now the focusing capability, you can see that I can adjust the focus just like that. Now, the nice thing is, as I've said, with this focusing lens, we can switch from viewing things like this here down to looking at this flight controller. And again, if I just get in close, you can see that things at the moment are looking very blurry. But if I now come in and I start adjusting the focus on this lens, you can then see that we can start getting in close and focusing in on the components. Again, just keep going in, keep adjusting that focus. So whether we wanna use this for repair of larger equipment or start doing things like board repair, we can do that because we are able to focus that lens and be able 
to use it in multiple different use cases. So again, we can look down on that oscillator. If we then flip this board over to the power side, you can now see we can start getting in close and we're now starting to see components that are getting very hot. We have a regulator there from the locus of it. It's a diode there with some heat. And then you can see that there's heat in the back side of that board as well. Over the last few weeks, I've spent a bit of time with this camera, testing it in various situations. I've taken it out and about with the family and as well as the dog as well, just to give you an overview of the kind of image that you can get from it. This year was a hot day and you can see that the grass is actually really, really hot. And I was using it to see how much I could see with people in the bushes, with the kids moving around both at distance and close range, and then also testing it on the dog out and about too. I've also been testing it whilst flying, checking my quads to see where the heat is, and also using it on electronic repair on the bench, looking at some flight controllers as well as other things. This board here has a short in the main SOC, and you can see that clearly being shown in the centre there, with the regulator being absolutely hammered as a result of that short. Also taking a look at some other boards like this Express LRS receiver, you can see again the main SOC is hot in the centre with that heat spreading out in the board. And the real nice thing with this camera is that it does have that variable focus lens, which means you can use it at distance but then get right down in close to look at even the smallest components on the board. For more electrical work, a thermal camera can be extremely handy to try and diagnose issues on circuits. Here you can see we're looking at my main electrical consumer unit on the input. We have some heat, nothing dramatic. It does show quite a difference on the thermal camera, on the main fuse as well as the input. And then on the consumer unit, you can see here all of my trips with the one of them showing where the current load is. At the moment, I actually had a washing machine and tumble dryer running on this circuit. And you can clearly see that on the breaker there, highlighting it compared to the ones around it. And you can even see the wires coming out the top of the board showing additional heat as well. There really is no end of handy uses for a thermal camera, including showing you where stud partition work is behind a plasterboard wall. Here you're seeing one of the walls in my house which is partitioned and you can even see the nails showing up on the timber and if I move then around you can even see in the corner where the stud work is located and then in the workshop again you can see the same thing. There is actually insulation behind this but you can see the difference in temperature showing so if you did want to put some nails into timber work you would be able to find it fairly easily. Now as I showed earlier you do have this handheld option for this as well with the mount that holds your phone and the camera up front and it just gives you a nice easy to move around with solution. It does have a tripod mount in the bottom as well and you could put this on the tripod if you wanted to giving you a number of other options as well. Overall I have to say these thermal cameras are just fantastic. While they may not have the highest resolution in the world they offer just so much additional capability that you're just not used to having without having a thermal camera. The ability to be able to do that electronic diagnostics but also see things like timbers in walls. Literally, there is no end to the use cases for a thermal camera like this. Now, if you're interested in getting one, there is a link to this camera in the description of this video. It is available in Android and iOS versions, as I mentioned, and it is available from multiple vendors as well, including AliExpress and Amazon. Infrared also have a number of other thermal cameras available too, including the P2 Pro that I reviewed on this channel a few months back that offers very similar levels of performance. Genuinely, I think it is a really, really good piece of kit. And I think it's something that if you're into DIY, if you're into electronics, you really should consider getting. That's it from me on this one. I hope you found the video useful. If you have, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. If you have any questions, please do put it in there as well. Furthermore, I just want to say if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon. I want to say a massive thank you from me to all of my patrons. I can only continue to do with the support you give. And if you're interested in supporting us moving forward, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.